Today we're going to be discussing every single Sora slash Tyrannosaurus slash T-Rex type Zoid within the Zoids franchise, minus a few that I may inevitably miss, like when I completely forgot the Wild and Beast Liger from the new series in my Every Liger Explained video because they somehow crossed my mind, even after staring at the wiki for hours gathering information for that video. Nonetheless, before I get into this, I just gotta mention my next video probably won't be a Zoids one and whoa, 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 don't get scared off yet. I've still got many notes full of ideas for Zoids videos and I'll definitely be making more of them in the future, so definitely like and subscribe. But I've done quite a few in a row at this point and the channel is about more than just Zoids. Trust me, it's all a part of my plan. Let me just uh, fill you in real quick. So first, I gotta diversify my content a little bit to draw more people in, you know? Get some more views, more subscribers, etc. And then maybe, just maybe one day with enough of a following, I can get all the new people who subscribe from other content to watch and enjoy Zoids as much as myself and a lot of you guys seem to as well. And maybe, just maybe, we could bring Zoids and Mecha Anime as a whole back to its glory days with a new surge in popularity. It's a long-term goal and to be fair, may never happen, but if I can ever see Zoids stocked in shelves like I saw in Japan a couple of weeks ago, my life would pretty much reach its peak. Speaking of which, if anyone's interested in hearing about my trip to Japan and good places to find model kits, definitely let me know in the comments because I'm more than happy to talk about it because I found a lot over there. Also, if you haven't noticed already, got a new backdrop. It's actually a photo that I took myself over in Japan and I feel like it fit the mood and was appropriate for this channel so I decided to put it up. Hope you like it as a new little backdrop for you. Long intro aside, don't forget to like and subscribe because it would be greatly appreciated and leave a comment down below because all this helps the video get out to more people, raising more awareness for Zoid and maybe one day brings it back to popularity in the West the same way it kind of has in Japan. Okay, so we're starting with one that didn't even come to my head when thinking about Tyrannosaurus, Sora type Zoids, but it's the Gojulus. Its registration number is RZ-001 and is a bit of a monster standing 21 meters tall by 26 meters wide and weighing 230 tons. It's a Tyrannosaurus type Zoid taking inspiration from Godzilla, if you couldn't tell already. The first time we see the Gojulus is in Chaotic Century episode 15, unless you want to count the destroyed one from the first episode, but eh. This is seen to be the actual Mark II as it features the rear cannons that the original Gojulus didn't have. It was extremely formidable in this episode and forced the Imperial forces to retreat their invasion. After that battle, where Herman actually causes the Zoid to, well, topple over, the Republic invests a lot more into their production, as they're seen a few more times in the anime, but by the end of the first season, they've kind of been power crept out by a lot of other Zoids like the Death Sora and Genosaurus, which is a bit unfortunate. We also see the Gojulus in Guardian Force for Season 2 of Chaotic Century, but as said before, at this point it is a bit of a toy zoid like it just gets destroyed by everything whether it be the geno breaker or van and his blade liger and his whole team it, it really just feels like nothing compared to how it used to the gradualist is seen again in new century but it's still and again nowhere near as menacing as its first appearance being taken out by the blitz team quite easily the gradualist giga is seen in fuses and is canonically a new and improved version of the gradualist it's much faster and more agile than the original gradualist and packs a bigger punch at close range it also has one of the strong strongest shields in the series that I don't recall seeing infusers, as well as laser blades coming out from its tail that are capable of cutting through even the Death Sora's armor. It makes it sound a lot more intimidating than at least I remember from fuses, huh? I can't seem to find any information of the Gojulus featuring in the Zoin's manga, and I haven't read the manga in a few years, so I can't really recall it ever featuring in it either. However, variants of the Gojulus Marina were seen in the Zoin's webcomic this being Type A and Type B. The Gojulus does feature in many of the Zoids games, and this is where additions like Gojulus the Ogre came from, in case you were wondering. The Gojulus is also seen in Zoids Saga, Zoids Legacy, Zoids Versus and Versus 2, and Zoids Battle Coliseum. And finally, the fun part, the model kits and different versions. Starting with the 1983 kit, the 1985 kit under the name Zoidzilla, the odd Robostrux kit, the 1987 Mark II kit and the Mark II Limited, the mid-90s release under the name Zoidzilla once again, the 1999 RZ-001, which is probably the one most familiar with, the 2000 Limited Edition Gojulus the Ogre, a Gachapon Mini, the 2002 Limited Marina, the 2003 re-release of the 1999 kit 
with a different box, 2005 Toys R Us re-release of the Mark II, the 2006 Limited Forest Gojulus, the 2006 Japan Limited Toys R Us Exclusive Holotech Gojulus, the Evo Drive slash Evo Drive Marina, the LB Gojulus, and Mark II Neo Blocks, and the GT Rex. Now for the HMM kits, we've got the 2013 Gojulus, the 2013 Gojulus the Ogre, and the Gojulus Gunner. One final comment on the Gojulus is another version which is the King Gojulus. It was much more Godzilla inspired and in the battle story it was considered the most powerful Zoid of its time. In terms of model kits it's hard to come by. It was released only in Japan in 1990 and then there was another blue color wave which was a contest prize also in Japan. From what I can find there was a re-release in 2008 but I'm not sure if this is also a Japanese exclusive or if it was released outside of Japan. Next up we have the Genosaurus which is a whole different beast. Its registration number is EZ-026 and to start off it's much smaller and lighter than the aforementioned Gojulus only at 112.8 tons, 11.7 meters tall, and 23 meters long. It also has a top speed of 260 kilometers per hour. The Genosaurus was created by taking inspiration from the Death Sora and basically scaling it down to a compact killing machine by using a bunch of Zoid cores similar to how the Death Sora was made. It's also extremely fast and agile, as seen in the Chaotic Century anime when piloted by Raven. We first see the Genosaurus at the end of episode 20 of Chaotic Century, when Prozen is actually handing over this Zoid to Raven. When it's properly introduced, it makes a really big impact and destroys a lot of Zoids in the process. And it makes such a big impact that it fully triggers Fiona's PTSD, making her think it's the Death Sora or something. It quickly beats up Van and Irvine and destroys Rosso and Viola's eye Kong. We see it destroy many Republican bases as well before the final arc of the first season where Van eventually does destroy in his Blade Liger. The Genosaur is again seen in Guardian Force and Raven almost kills Van this time. We also get to see Reese's Psycho Genosaur which is alluded to being stronger as it was made using elements of the Genobreaker Breaker to improve its capabilities. Three more Genosaurs are seen in Chaotic Century but I'll discuss that in the Genobreaker Breaker section. We see three more Genosaurs in New Century which are said to be extremely powerful full legendary zoids that quickly get destroyed by the berserk fury. Granted, the pilots weren't bringing out the full capabilities of those zoids, but I digress. The last time we see a Genosaurus is in Fuses, where again, like Zoids such as the Blade Liger from my last video, is suddenly not raw at all, and honestly quite weak in comparison to other Zoids in the series. Within the Chaotic Century manga, the Genosaurus is seen to be much more powerful than the anime, and it's much more agile and destructive. Plus, it can also fire its charged particle cannon from the air, which was exclusively on the Genobreaker in the anime and was a key difference between the two. The Genosaurus was featured in the Zoid Saga and and Versus series and had multiple forms such as the Geno Trooper, Proto Breaker, Geno Scissors and Geno Flame. In terms of model kits, the Genosaur was initially released in 1999 in its original colour. There was also a limited editions of this kit in Chrome. It was also released as a Gachapon Mini. There was a prototype kit in 1999 that was simply dubbed T-Rex which used the Death Sora's colour scheme and was the inspiration for the Genosaurus seen in Guardian Force with that, you know, alternate colour scheme. The Genosaur was then re-released in 2003 and had a Toys R Us exclusive holotech. In 2005, the Bone Genosaur was released and was an exclusive to the Uno Museum's Dinosaur Expo 2005. And there was also a Blocks iteration of the Genosaur 2. From Kota Bikia, we've had the initial Genosaur, the Genosaur Raven version, the Psycho Genosaur, and the Genosaur Bone Color version, which I was very close to picking up in Japan. It looks really great. Also, a side note, there was another version of the Genosaur known as the Ritter, which looks like a Digivolved Genosaur that it's basically more powerful and for some reason had a CG promo video. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. The Geno Breaker. Its registration number is EZ-034. It weighs 137.5 tons, is 13.7 meters tall, and 23 meters long. It has a top speed of 345 kilometers per hour and has many new toys such as a shield and its X Breakers. The first time we see the Geno Breaker is in Chaotic Century episode 47 when it emerges from its cocoon evolved from the Genosaurus. It very quickly proves how much of a monster it is withstanding a massive barrage right out of the gate with its new shield. And at this stage, it doesn't even have a pilot, it's just controlled by Shadow. The unmanned Zoid proceeds to lay waste to a small army of Zoids and eventually rendezvousing with its pilot. With Raven at the controls, the Zoid proceeds to completely destroy Irvine's command wolf and nearly kill Van once again. The last time we see the Genie Breaker in an anime is a small easter egg in New Century when Dr. Taurus is seen to have a model of it. It is an extremely powerful Zoid and in the whole series doesn't 
actually get defeated by anyone outside of technically the Death Sora in the end. Van and his team could never actually defeat this Zoid, even though it kind of looked likely in his fight when the Death Stinger kind of interrupted, but otherwise pretty much uncontested in the whole series, as well as the fact that Shadow can't really merge with it for longer than 60 seconds, so all of Raven's fights kind of have to be all out if he wants to have Shadow as support. Otherwise, he is seen piling the Zoid without Shadow, like in the very end, in the, I think, second or third last episode, where he actually fights three Genosaurus at once without Shadow helping at all. So he's trying to, like, control this immense power without any help from any Organoids, and he successfully wins, although not as fluidly as Vega won against his three Genosaurus with the Berserk Fury. However, you got to think about the fact that A, these Genosaurus in Chaotic Century seem to be a lot more capable and we're working together rather than just firing one charged particle beam. And B, just outright the Berserk Fury is a stronger Zoid than the Geno Breaker, so that he has a couple of advantages there. But hey, it's still an amazing fight and probably my favorite in the entire series, let alone just Chaotic Century. Even New Century fuses everything. One of the best fights ever. Unfortunately, the Geno Breaker didn't make such a great presence in the manga. It was actually never piloted by Raven, as once the Genosaurus was destroyed, he moved on to a Berserk Fury instead. But it is seen in the manga being sliced up by Raven and his Berserk Fury. In terms of the games, Geno Breaker featured in the Zoid Saga and Zoid's Versus series. Okay, so now for the model kits. We have the initial 1999 release, the re-released Geno Breaker Jet, although not true to the actual look of the jet, in a limited color scheme, and the 2003 American release. And from Kota Bakia, we've got the initial Geno Breaker and the Raven version that came with small painted figures and a Shadow Organoid too. Now we're on to what's arguably the biggest and baddest sword on the list, the Death Sora. Starting off, its registration number is EZ-021. It weighs 400 tons, is 21 meters tall and 32.4 meters long. These sizes might sound a bit off if you've watched the anime, but this is due to the anime greatly exaggerating the size of this sword, as well as many others. But if we take, for instance, the lore side, Size and apply them to the anime to get a more accurate size, the Gojulus is said to be 21 meters tall, and in the anime, the Gojulus is seen to stand around as tall as the Death Sora's of Lair. So I would say you could most likely stand around 2.5 Gojuluses to reach the Death Sora's height. That would make it approximately 52 meters tall in the anime. However, the Gojulus' size is also exaggerated, but whatever. It's a big boy, okay? We, we get it. The main strength of the Death Sora comes from its unbreakable armor and charge part cannon anyway, so forget the size. The Death Sora gets referenced quite early on in the Chaotic Century anime as being the Zoid that wiped out almost the entire ancient Zoidian race. The first time we see a Death Sora is in episode 32, The Doom Machine, when Van and Fiona sneak out to investigate what Prozen is planning, only to unveil his Death Sora clone. This Death Sora was artificially created by Prozen actually acquiring the original Death Sora core and then having Raven collect many other Zoid cores and using this and his top scientists and all these other resources he had to birth a Death Sora. We see the Death Sora for one last time at the end of Guardian Force at Zoid Eve. However, this one is THE Death Sora, not an imitation like we saw before, so it is much more powerful. I also can't seem to find any records of the Death Sora being in the Zoid's manga, and quite frankly, I don't remember it being there either. However, if anyone does have any info on it, feel free to let me know in the comments below. In terms of the games, the Death Sora was featured in Zoid's Legacy, Zoid's Saga, Zoid's Versus, and Zoid's Battle Coliseum. In terms of the models, the Death Sora was initially released in 1983, then again in 1999 with some chrome version. There was also a clear version limited to 100 units. In 2002, a limited edition Bloody Death Sora was released with only 3,000 units being made. There was a prototype Megasaura that was white and was supposed to be released in 2004, but was canned. A Dark Death Sora was also revealed, but never produced. In 2011, a D-style Death Sora was released and along with a Bloody Death Sora in 2012. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten a HMM of the Death Sora yet, but hopefully one day in the future we will. The Berserk Fury's registration number is EZ-049, weighs 127 tons, is 12.3 meters tall and 22.7 meters long. Its top speed is 340 kilometers per hour and is an extremely formidable Tyrannosaurus type Zoid that surpasses its predecessor the Genobreaker. It features three 
three points in which it can fire a charged particle cannon, one from its mouth and the other two from its buster claws mounted on its back. The buster claws also can generate a energy shield, so isn't that snazzy? The Berserk Fury, similar to its rival Liger Zero, has multiple CASs, however they don't get featured in the anime, so we'll mention them throughout this. We first see the Berserk Fury in episode 22 of Zoid's New Century when it's found in the ocean. It's said to be an ultimate exoid similar to the Liger Zero, meaning the Zoid has an organoid-like system inside it allowing it to learn and improve much better than others. This proves to be very useful to its pilot Vega. Although he is a very competent pilot on his own, the Fury learning and anticipating other Zoid's moves puts him at an even further advantage. This is shown when Vega and the Fury can predict some of Bitten the Liger's moves in their fights. At the end of the century, there comes a point where Vega is actually knocked out unconscious, allowing the Fury to have free roam over whatever it chooses to do, and it goes on a rampage. This is eventually stopped when Vega ejects from the Fury and it begins to power down, or you can interpret it as a bit defeating it, causing its combat system to freeze. The next time we see the Fury is in Zoid's fuses piloted by Blake. It's a Zoid that is capable of fusing with the Buster Eagle to create the Buster Fury. This was seen as one of the most powerful and capable Zoids of the series, and recorded battles between it and the Liger Zero were used as the framework in designing the superior Energy Liger and Garuki Fury. The Berserk Fury played a bit of a larger role in the Chaotic Century manga, being the Zoid that Raven acquires after his Genosaur is destroyed. Raven also eventually fuses Shadow with the Berserk Fury to create the Berserk Fury Shadow Edge, which is definitely an awesome iteration of the Berserk Fury. The Berserk Fury featured in the New Century Manga 2, however this time piloted by Altile rather than Vega, if you remember him from the anime. Altile tries to utilize the Fury to ruin the backdraft group's plans for world domination, however in the process, mess with the Liger Zero and Blitz team and in the end, the Liger Zero came out on top of that battle. The Berserk Fury features in the Zoid Saga and Zoid's Versus series in terms of games. In terms of the model kits, it was initially released in 2001 and an additional Storm unit was released by Tommy at the same time. There were also chromed versions released in Taiwan. It was then released as a King of Flexible model and also the model kit was re-released by Hasbro. Then, in 2003, Japan released a limited edition Storm Tyrant. With the introduction of Fuses, another model was released that was compatible with the Buster Eagle to create the Buster Fury. For the Kota Bakir kits, we've got an initial release in 2012 that came with a Vega figure, as well as a very rare Holotech model released as a contest prize in 2013. There's actually a guy on the Zoid subreddit that has one and it's extremely cool. The Storm Tyrant also has been released as a HMM kit. Other versions of the Fury that I haven't mentioned thus far are the Jag D Fury, the Berserk Fury Y and Z, all of which are found in the Zoid's games. Now we've come to the Gairuki Fury, probably the only Zoid from Fuses I genuinely like. Its registration number is RZ-070, it weighs 118 tons, is 12.6 meters tall, 23.8 meters long and has a top speed of 290 kilometers per hour. The first and only time we see the Gairuki Fury in the anime is in Fuses. It's introduced in episode 14 when the Zoid is given to Blake by Alpha's son, Luke. In the anime, the Zoid was created using data from studying the Berserk Fury and the fights Blake previously used it in. Thus, it's much stronger than the Berserk Fury itself. One key feature of the Gairuki is that it pretty much converted to solar power. If you remember from other Zoids I've mentioned already, they all have some sort of intake, for example, the Death Sora's fan, as a way to use their charged particle cannon. Whereas the Gairuki can actually absorb energy from other Zoids' beam weapons or in more dire situations, it can absorb solar energy from the sun to power its charged particle beam. The panels for absorption are seen all around the Gairuki. It's those orange glowy things. The Gairuki also has a cool little gimmick where it can remove its armor to create small block zoids that can act as little remote allies that do their own thing. So that's pretty cool too. Lastly, it has two fuses, that being the Evo Flyer and Dispolo, creating the Gairuki speed and destroy accordingly. The speed allows for limited flight and an increase in speed to 370 kilometers per hour, whereas the destroy slows the zoid down to a max of 190 kilometers per hour, but gives it a layer of protection as well as a lot of firepower. The Gairuki was never featured in the Zoid's manga, but was featured in the game, such as the Zoid's Saga series, Zoid's Struggle, and Zoid's Versus 3. In terms of the model kits, the Gairuki was initially released in 1999, then re-released in the Fuses line with a Blake figure, and in 2005, a limited edition Shikoku Gairuki Shin was made as a contest prize. This model had a black color scheme as opposed to the blue. While we're on the topic of Fuses, I'll quickly mention the Gravity Rex. Not much to say about this one, it was a Gravity Zoid meant for Fuses that was never in the anime. There was a few models produced, but the kit never actually reached mass production, so it's very rare. The specs of it are a weight of 82 tons, height of 18.36 meters, and length of 
7.56 meters and I had a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. All right, so the Biotan Rhino is the big boss soid of Genesis. Its registration number is GB-002, weighs 160 tons, stands 12.9 meters tall, 29.4 meters long, and has a top speed of 230 kilometers per hour. The Biotan Rhino is exclusive to Zoids Genesis and is one of the most powerful biosoids created specifically for Jin. Its size was greatly exaggerated in the anime, but that doesn't make it any less of a monster. It features Darkness Hell Armor, which is similar Similar to the standard armor on Biozoids, which can only be destroyed by Metal Z weapons. However, this armor is also resistant to Metal Z, which makes it very tough to deal with. The Tyranno also has a custom Bioparticle Cannon, which increases its power, as well as causes an implosion rather than an explosion, which is pretty wild. Jin names this weapon Divine Thunder in relation to his false sense of thinking that he's some sort of god. The Bio Tyranno never features in any media outside of the Genesis anime. However, the Mother Bio is featured as the final boss in Zoid's Generations. It's heavily based off the Bio Tyranno and has two bioparticle cannons rather than just one. Not much seems to be known about this Zoid, but it does appear to be much stronger and larger than the Tyranno, judging by its stats in the wiki. The Bio Tyranno features in the game Super Robot Wars K and Zoid's Colosseum. In terms of the model kits, the Bio Tyranno was released once in 2005 in the Genesis line. There was also a Zoid's amusement figurine release too. As an honourable mention, we've got the Bio Volcano. It's more of a raptor, but eh, I wanted to include it. Its registration number is GB-008, weighs 92 tons, is 14.8 meters tall, 33.8 meters long and at a top speed of 380 kilometers per hour. The volcano is exclusive to Genesis and is piloted by Zyron, who is honestly a pretty great character. He's given the Zoid by Jin, who kind of has alternative motives there, using the Zoid to drain Zyron's life to help complete his bio Tyranno. Eventually, when Zyron and his volcano end up in Sora City by trying to follow Ruji, this device is removed. The volcano is extremely strong. It features an extremely resilient armor in a crimson red color that seems almost as strong as a Tyranno's armor. It also has a bio part cannon that fires from its chest, which plays a key part in the end of the series when, spoiler alert, Zarin fights Jin and manages to expose the Tyranno Zoid core so that Ruji can finish him off. The volcano features in Zoid Saga, Legend of Arcadia, as well as Super Robot Wars K. In terms of the models, it was released as a kit in the Genesis line in 2005. So lastly, we're onto the Zoids from Wild and Wild Zero. Not forgetting this time. We're starting with the Death Rex. Its registration number is ZW12. It weighs 154 tons, is 5.6 meters tall, and 12.3 meters long. I feel like this guy is kind of teeny. I don't know if all Zoids in Wild are really tiny. I know people ride them, but damn, it's like the size of what, four cars? Anyway, poking fun aside, the Death Rex is featured exclusively in Zoids Wild and is a legendary Zoid depicted in the same legend as the Wild Liger. The Death Rex first appears in episode 13 of Zoids Wild. In episode 20, it first uses the Death Blast, which I'm presuming is a version of the Charged Particle Cannon, maybe? In episode 49, it's revealed the Death Rex is the Great Ancient Treasure Z and activates its full power Death Blast. At the end of Wild, the Death Rex is seen falling back into lava at the site it was first excavated. I guess it was initially buried. I really need to watch Wild and Wild Zero because I've got no idea what's actually happening here. The Death Rex does have a model kit too, released by Tommy. All right, lastly, we have the Omega Rex from Zoid's Wild Zero, which is an interesting one. From my knowledge, the Wild Zero anime hasn't actually concluded yet, and the wiki currently has nothing listed under the anime tab. So all I really know is that its registration number is ZW38. It weighs 161.4 tons. It's 6.5 meters tall, 12.3 meters long, and has a top speed of 165 kilometers per hour. So it's the size of maybe six cars. I can also confirm it's an antagonist from Zoid's Wild, and will most likely be the final boss and looks a lot like the death rex it also does have a charge particle cannon according to the wiki so that's kind of cool i can also see the zoid has a model kit created by tommy also and that's literally all the info i can seem to find on it just a sign at the end here sorry about the long waits between uploads i won't go too far into it but basically between full-time work my personal life and trying to get through my current backlog of kits i'm building at the moment i only get roughly an hour or so on weekdays to kind of record and edit these videos and considering how long they take to edit it does end up taking quite some time to produce and publish them out to YouTube. Fortunately enough, I can write scripts on my two hours worth of train trips to and from work, and maybe in the future I can invest in a good enough laptop to edit as well, but at the moment I'm kind of limited, so I'm doing what I can. And especially with videos like this and how long they are, it takes a little bit of time, but I hope you enjoy them anyway. So thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel in any way you can by dropping a like, leaving a comment, subscribing. It's all greatly appreciated and really makes the effort I put into this feel like it's worth it. So I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.